Live from Netroots Nation in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, and Liz Schuler sitting next to me. She's the sec Secretary Treasurer of the AFL CIO. AFL CIO, of course, dot org. Right, this <laughs> is the website. Liz, you need to get a little closer to that microphone, and let me crank up your volume control. So, so what's what's up? What are you doing here? What's what's and and you know what's your take on Netroots Nation? What's the AFL C? What's what's at the top of your stack right now? Well, I'm here at Netroots Nation, actually. I just participated in a panel on inequality, and uh, so what, we... What kind of in inequality? Income inequality? Income inequality, mm -hmm. yes. Um, we were talking a lot about how the economy is uh, many at the top getting richer, and those of us um, in the middle class and lower income levels are um, not getting our fair share of the pie, and certainly how unions play a role in that. Well, and they do. And and, it's, and income inequality and wealth inequality as well. I mean, we, we have now the 400 richest people in America control more wealth than the 150 million of the, you know, the bottom of America, basically the core of America. I think you can Absolutely. say 400 people own more wealth. And, and uh, are you familiar with uh, Richard Wilkerson's work, The Spirit Level, the book The Spirit Level and his, uh, the Equality Trust at uh, org.uk and, and you can, they have taken every single state in the United States and shown how the states that have the greatest levels of inequality also have the highest levels of infant mortality, of teen pregnancy, of STDs, of mental illness, of both prescription and illegal drug abuse, of imprisonment, of lack of trust in others, of, I mean, you know, every single, oh, failure in schools, you know, right. we, don't, we don't have a school problem in the United States, we've got an inequality problem, so. So, Absolutely. so how, how, what's the union movement do other than the obvious thing that if I work in a union job, I'm typically better paid and have better benefits. What's the union movement doing to wake people up about inequality? Well, it's this notion of rebalancing our economy, really. And as you, you're very good with the statistics, but I'll throw one out there, which is, you know, the average CEO last year made over $11 million. Right. And there's been a lot of talk about deficits and cutting when in fact that $11 million, uh, you know, buys 200 and some teachers. Um, you know, it, it, 475 college grads' debt could be erased with that salary. So um, it's really about educating people, mobilizing, and bringing people together in collective action to demand their fair share. How do you respond to the right-wingers who inevitably say, and they say it to me constantly, <laughs> Oh, you're, you're calling for a class war here. What you're saying is that rich people don't deserve all that money and you want to take it away from them. And one day I might be a rich person. You know, I buy those lottery <laughs> tickets every week and, 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 and you want... Good luck you to know. him. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but seriously, how do you respond to that argument that this is class warfare? Well, you call it what you will. I think the whole point is that we have, uh, things are completely out of whack in this country, and we have actually uh, focused on the wrong priorities. There's state budget debates going on all across this country that continue to focus on how do we cut pensions for average Americans? That how is, do we cut wages? Warfare. Right. So. Um, it's, uh, in our opinion, the wrong priorities, and yeah. we need to start focusing on creating jobs and investing in infrastructure and investing in our economy so that we put people back to work. It seems like we have been infected with an illness, you know, and, and I, I would say a, a psychological illness, and that it started, you know, arguably it started in the 60s and 70s with the publication of things like Atlas Shrugged and the creation of the Heritage Foundation and whatnot, but it really took the nation in its grip when Ronald Reagan became president and said government is not the solution to the problems, government is the cause of the problems. And to the best of my knowledge, we have not had a president who has given a full-throated rebuttal to that since 1981. Even President Obama, who has done a good job of trying to show that government can work and has talked about it, but talked about it in a relatively gentle way that I, I think most Americans are not hearing. How do we change 30 years of thinking? I mean, you've got, you've got kids who, you know, young, not kids, you have people in their 40s, yeah. who, uh, 50s maybe even, who, who grew up knowing nothing other than this truism, this, this belief that government is bad and that everything should be done by the private sector and that anything the government protects, like the right to unionize, is therefore by extension bad. 
Well, we're seeing that all across the country now with the attacks on public sector uh, working people and the fact that they've been demonized just by virtue of their association with the government. And um, also coming out of that 30-year trend was this notion of individualism versus um, collective action and the fact that when people come together, obviously their chances are better of improving their wages and benefits versus going into your boss's office alone. Right. Um, so I think that's what we need to get back to is, is really the power of collective action. You know, one of my favorite um, counter stories, counter narratives is democracy. Mm -hmm. um, in the wor workplaces are set up as kingdoms. You know, you've got kings and princes and lords right. and, and, and serfs, <laughs> right. right? But unions are democratic institutions. Mm -hmm. Unions elect their their officers. They elect their officials. They, Absolutely. You know, and and so unions are democracy in the workplace. Can we can we run with that thing and get, and get out there? Because everybody seems to love democracy right now. We're we're throwing what the State Department now has a six billion dollar fund to promote democracy in other countries. Right. Why not in the workplace? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think unions, um, for whatever reason, people have. Uh, less of an association with them personally, so they don't realize what we're really about. We're about representing workers individually as then coming together collectively to demand more. And they create this wealth for companies. Um, why not bring them together, have a seat at the table, demand um, you know an equal share of the wealth they help, help create, really. Right. And also be a voice for solutions. I mean, we've seen also in Wisconsin and Ohio and all of these places where they're attacking collective bargaining, workers have been willing to come to the table and say, I know, we're all feeling the pain with budget deficits. Why don't we help you fix that and bring you know, our ideas to the table and listen to us? And yeah. That's all we ask. Absolutely time to do it. Liz, thanks so Thank much you. for being with us. Thanks for the great work you're doing with the Thank you for your work. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure.